Hallelujah to Jesus. Well, we are getting ready to go into the Word of God. And I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And we're going to be reading verses 1 and 2. And we will focus our attention primarily on verse 2. Amen. When you have it, say amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Reading from verses 1 and 2. Here beginning the reading of God's holy word. Let's all read together. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Let's read verse 2 again. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. God bless the reading of his holy word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And today, I would just like to talk to you on the subject, faithfulness or being faithful unto God. A few years ago, I heard a popular preacher make a comment that really caught my attention. He said, in a church of a thousand members, you are lucky if you can find at least 50 people that are really faithful to the Lord and to the things of God. And you know, when he said that, I got, you know, one of those aha moments because I started thinking, well, if it's like that in a church of a thousand members, what would it be like in a church that has 200 members or 100 members or less? Because if the truth be told, not everyone that claims to be faithful to God is actually faithful to him. You have those in the body of Christ who are faithful unto death. God can depend on them morning, noon, and night. God can close his eyes and he know beyond the shadow of a doubt. Just like how he spoke up for Job before Satan, he could speak up. For some of these people before anybody and let them know that these people here are faithful unto me no matter what comes their way. And then on the flip side now, you have those who have this flaky faithfulness. I know it's going to be quiet today, but that's all right. They are only faithful when things are going their way. They are faithful when their bread is buttered on both sides. They are faithful when they got enough money in their pockets and when the blessings of the Lord is hitting them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. But the minute that they encounter a rough season, the minute they encounter some kind of warfare, there goes their faithfulness unto God. You know, a couple days ago, I visited a site called Yahoo Answers, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Yahoo Answers or Yahoo, those of you that are online a lot. And I saw a question that really took me by surprise. Someone asked the question, why don't churches use lie detectors to find out who the truly faithful members of the flock are? That's what they posted. When I saw that, I almost fell out. And that was not in the spirit. I was really surprised. But then at the same time, I shouldn't be surprised because ungodly people knows who are faithful and who are flaky. Because they're constantly looking at us as believers. We think not because we don't have a Bible in our hands that people cannot detect whether you go to church or not. People talk. <laughs> People could send stuff, you understand? If the devil knows your name and he knows your business, and he, you understand, he could feed that information to anybody. Talk back to me, somebody. So people know what is going on. And if ungodly people could see that you are not faithful unto God, it's a bad testimony to our witness for the kingdom of God. The Bible said in the book of Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6, it says here, 
Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man, who can find? That's a question. I also have the next translation. It's called from the message. It says here, lots of people claim to be loyal and loving. We are faithful. We are loving. We are caring. But where on earth can you find one? I want you to think about that for a minute. Because stuff like this will make you say, ouch, all the way. There are some messages when the preacher taught, it will put a smile on your face. It will put a shout down in your soul. It will cause you to wave your hands and just enjoy the, the presence of the Lord. And then there are other messages that will cut you deep to the core. It goes deep. You understand? To the very crevices of your spirit. And those are the kind of messages that puts the church on lockdown. Mm, you see, you, you would barely get any amens when you preach messages like faithfulness and holiness and obedience. See, because some demon don't like that kind of stuff, you see. And our flesh cannot get with it. We want to enjoy the benefits of the Lord and we want to enjoy the goodness of the Lord. And we want God to be faithful to us, mind you. But we don't want to be faithful him and the question that we need to ask ourselves as believers is am I truly faithful to God can God really depend on me can God consider me a trustworthy person one who is loyal and committed to him through thick and thin through ups and downs, through sickness and health, through being blessed or being broke, can God fully depend on me? Can God really say that I am faithful unto him? In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, the Apostle Paul says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found, what? Faithful. Everyone say faithful. faithful. Say it one more time. Faithful. Another word for stewards in the Bible is servants. Everyone say servants. Servant. Or trustees. In biblical times, wealthy men would oftentimes have many investments and businesses. And what they would do is to assign stewards or trustees to handle certain portions of their businesses while they were away or while they were focusing on some other things. And the stewards now did not own the business, but they were entrusted, I want you to get this in your spirit, with the success of the, their master's business, they were expected to continue increasing and advancing the master's business while he was away. That is the job of a steward. In the kingdom of God, every born-again believer is a steward. We are known as servants of the Most High God, as trustees of the manifold grace of God or the master's business. We are not owners of God's work, but we have been entrusted with some assignment, some position, some anointing, some gift some calling talk back to me somebody in the kingdom of God and the Bible says that it is required I'm going to say it again because I want you to get it in your spirit on today I don't want you to leave here today not being revolutionized in your mind and in your soul it is required or it is expected above everything else that the servants of the Lord I said that the servants of the Lord, how many servants of the Lord do we have in the house? That the servants of the Lord be found faithful, not handsome, not wealthy, not popular, not eloquent, not the best dressed, but faithful before the Lord. God demands 
faithfulness from his people. He demands that his people be faithful in service and faithful in living for him and faithful in every area of their lives. The reason why many relationships don't last long because some demon is unfaithful. And y'all better say amen because you know I'll go there quickly. Somebody will have an unfaithful spirit in the relationship. And when we find folks that are not faithful to us, we're ready to quit and to walk. Huh? But, but, but you know, God is so good. No, God is really good. I said God is, and some of you do act stink with your praise, you understand? Because God has really been good to you. Y'all should be tearing up the church right now. I mean, the, the furniture should be all over the, pra- the place throughout the praise service. Huh? God has really been good. He could have cut us off a long time. We could have been six feet in our grave. Talk back to me. God could have struck us down a long time. But because of the mercy and the... Y'all better put your hands together and thank God for the mercy and thank God for grace. Because if it had not been for the Lord, oh, you better... The Apostle Paul and all of the apostles and, and different ones in the Bible, they, they were known to be faithful, man. Faithful to the things of God. Did they go through a lot? Yes, they did. They endured more trials and tribulations than many of us put together. But yet they were faithful to the work of God. They contended to the faith. You didn't hear anything about Apostle Paul thinking about backsliding and all of that kind of mess. Uh -uh. These men stood their grounds through thick and thin. They proved themselves. Proved. You you, you have to understand. You have to understand that in the Bible before deacons and ministers and elders were appointed. They had was to go through and even bishops. What? But they had was to go through a process where they had was to be proven see not any and everybody got a title i know today we just throw titles around you are this and you are that and you're the other and because you wear white you know you're the chief intercessor because you got money you're the head elder uh they didn't have that in the bible days everybody went through a period of testing to prove to see if they were Before they were appointed into the office. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. I, you don't have it but I'm going to read it here. It said, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord. Who hath enabled me. For he had counted me faithful. Putting me into the ministry. Before you could do any kind of ministry for the kingdom of God. You have to be proven to be a faithful man and a faithful woman of God. Talk back to me somebody. In Luke chapter 16 verses 10 and 12. The word of God says. He that is faithful in that which is least. Also in much. Is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Verse 11 says. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to you your trust, to to, to your trust, the true riches, verse 12. And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Just pause and think about that for a minute. Your faithfulness to God will be tested. Before God can trust you, he has to first test you. I'm taking my time. No more about preaching. I'll preach next Sunday. And the area, the area that God will test us in at first is in the area of the little things. The small things. The things that may seem insignificant to our eyes, but is very much important to the eyes of God. I heard T.D. Jake say that big things come in 
little packages. Amen. And sometimes we fail to realize that there's power in the seed. <laughs> but if you have faith as the size of a must, you can move mountains just with that. So don't ever despise the little. And see, the reason why God starts us off first with the little is because he wants to see how faithful we are in handling the little things that he has entrusted into our hands before he can bring us into the bigger things. I know greater is coming. <laughs> I know your best days and your blessed days are approaching. I know what God has prophesied and declared to you will come to pass in due time, but not until you're faithful with the little things. Don't be sitting here, you know, a lot of times we tend to claim big stuff, and there's nothing wrong with that. And we tend to pray big prayers, and we have big dreams, and all of that is well and good. All of that is in order. But if you're not faithful with the little things that God has given to you, the little assignments, the little positions that he has entrusted in your hands, what make you think that God is going to open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there's not going to be room enough to receive it? The devil is a liar. Or talk back to me, somebody. Because the bigger the, re the, bigger the blessings, the bigger the responsibilities, the bigger the blessings, the greater the warfare. And if you're not handling the pressure with dealing with the little stuff, what make you think you can handle the big stuff? Talk back to me, somebody. The Bible says that if you have not been faithful with unrighteous mammon or money, who will commit to your trust the true witches? If you can balance your checkbook at the moment, oh, y'all got quiet right there. What makes you think, huh? If you can't handle your little salary right now, what makes you think that you can handle a big corporation and handle millions of dollars? You know, a lot of times we look at we look at these big gigantic corporations and, and, and you know these wealthy people and whatnot and we aspire to be like them but they did not start off like that even if they inherited some things they still had us to learn the process as a matter of fact as, as far as I know a lot of wealthy people do not just give their monies away to their children just like that they have to be taught and trained and, and be taught how to be disciplined and how to handle money. There's this uh, famous singer, I'm not going to call her name. But her father, she, she, she was doing the, the Disney World, Disney Ch Channel's uh, shows. And her father, you know, she, he was, she was making millions of dollars. But her father would give her $75 a week. She's making millions per month. But her father gave her $75 a week. Until she turned about 18 or 19 years. Just to teach her. How to be faithful with the little things. Because if you can't handle the $75 a week. If every time I ask you where's your money. And it's all at McDonald's. Or it's all at JC's Pennies. Or it's all, or talk back to me somebody. Or it's all somewhere at the, at the shopping mall. Or whatever the place, places you may go to. If you can't handle that money. What makes you think you're going to handle millions of dollars? Why do you think people who play the lottery and win all of these million dollars a day end up broke by next year? Uh, because they're not disciplined in the little. And that's what Jesus was saying. If you can't be faithful with your 10th percent unto God and tithing unto God, if you can't be faithful in your giving unto God with what God has blessed you with, what makes you think that God is going to bring abundance and increase in your life? God is not about to make you the bigger thief. Will a man rob God? And you're robbing him with a litter? You think, you think God is going to increase you and bless you while you're robbing him? The devil is... And he got big feet and bad breath too. 
talk back to me, somebody. If you're not faithful, and I'm not making this up, it's in the word. If you are not faithful in unrighteous mammon, who could commit to you true riches? If you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? If you're not faithful in your responsibilities in the house of God, we're going to use that as an example. You have a position as an usher. You have a position as a deacon or as a minister or as an elder or, or whatever position as a Sunday school teacher. If you are not faithful. You see, you see, the problem with church folks is that we don't see the bigger picture. We don't see the full destiny of our lives. You see, we don't know. This is the year 2014. In the year of 1988, I was still in Trinidad. I never knew in all of my thinking or in all of my imagination that one day I was going to be here in the United States pastoring a church. I never saw that. I mean, I got prophecy that God's going to use me to travel here, then you're going to preach the gospel, so on and so forth. You understand? But you're not thinking it's going to be like this, and then God knows what is coming up next. You see, you're not, you're not thinking like that, you see? But even though I got the prophecy and all of that, I was very diligent in the house of God. You didn't have to ask me to do nothing. You didn't have to pay me. You didn't have to recognize me. You didn't have to tap me on the back. You didn't have to encourage me. I just had a faithful spirit. If you needed me to usher, there are many times I went to different revivals. And I was ushering. I was glad to usher. It's calling people, and I'm, I'm a big anointed to play and to sing and all that, but yet I'm ushering people and putting people to sit down. And when they would ask me to do this, I would do this. And when they would ask me to stand behind so-and-so, I would stand behind. I was just that faithful. And even if they didn't ask me, I was looking for something to do. Did not realize that one day, <laughs> if you are not faithful in that which is another man's, what makes you think that God is going to promote you into your own ministry, into your own callings, into your own businesses? Talk back to me, somebody. If you're not faithful on your jobs. You know, I heard someone say, it's amazing when people are not working, they're looking for work. And when they find work, they stop working. Huh? You find work and you stop working. And you will only work when the master or your boss is there. But after they're gone, you're on the cell phone, you're on Facebook, you're texting, you're hanging out outside on the company's time, getting company's money. The devil is a liar. You all better be thankful I'm not your boss. Talk back to me, somebody. Yet you want to have your own business. And you have to remember, you keep sowing those bad seeds and you will end up. Why do you think that Daniel and Joseph in the Bible and David, to name a few, came into greater? It's because they were faithful in another man's house. God placed them there and they did what they were told to do and then some. You see, they gave of themselves. No one had to beg them. No one had to offer them an extra few dollars. I don't know what demon this is. We always want an extra few dollars just to do one more thing. Can We can't go. You know, the, the church has drifted from going the extra mile. You understand? We don't understand. That's why, that's why the Holy Ghost is saying, I need you to bring it back down to the foundation. Bring it back down to the basics. Uh, because people need to grow right in the house of the Lord. Oh, come on here, somebody. We, we, we are on our way to heaven, but we're not going right. We have to get right before we get there. Talk back to me, somebody. We have to be willing to go the extra mile. Payday is coming. Huh? Payday is coming. What God has promised is coming. 
But baby, we got to be in position. We got to, we got to be in a position that when God comes and he sees us being faithful, he sees us working, he sees us doing what we are supposed to do. Talk back to me, somebody. You know, one of my favorite shows is Undercover Boss. I mean, if you have Undercover Boss, it's really good, really good. It's a, it comes on like every week or something like that, yeah. I have a few episodes that I have to catch up on. I've been so busy, but. But one of the things I love about Undercover Boss is that it just, it, it reflects kingdom. The kingdom of God. Because these bosses, for those of you who know it, will disguise themselves and they'll go undercover <coughs> to the, their various companies to see what their employees are doing. And I would never forget there was this particular episode that really moved my heart. A few of them did, but this one really touched me. And the Holy Spirit started speaking to me because this boss from 7-Eleven, I believe it was a convenience store, went undercover. And this man was an employee there, and he was working diligently. Boy, he loved that job. And he was just, you know, this, this employee was acting as if 7-Eleven was his own. So they, the undercover boss came, you know, and he acts as if he's new to the job. And so they put him to work with this young man. And this young man was just talking about, oh, wow, I wish one day I would, you know, I'm able to fall, you know, my own 7-Eleven, what I would do and how I'll fix it up and what, how I'll expand the business. And he was just talking, acting as if 7-Eleven was his own company. And whatever the bosses from 7-Eleven needed him to do, he was just doing it. And then doing a more on top of that and just working it and working it. And at the end of the show, now, you know, the bosses, you know, they reveal themselves. And the boss came to the young man and said, I am so-and-so from 7-Eleven, the, the, the chief executive officer, whatever. And so the young man was, oh, you were shocked to realize that he was work, uh, working with the head of the company. And throughout their conversation uh, prior to that, he, the boss had asked him, what, what do you want? You know, what, uh, what are your aspirations? He said, well, I would love to own my own 7-Eleven, you know. But he was saying it jokingly because he didn't think he was working with the, you know, the boss or whatnot. And don't you know that the boss gave him his own 7-Eleven? Because that young man was faithful. In a no hey, that's it right there. In another man's work. And now he came and, be and got blessed to be owner of his own 7-Eleven franchise. You see, and this is what God wants to do for his people. It's in the word of God. Unfortunately, the children of the world are wiser than the children of light. You see, they tend to catch the principles while we're getting so busy shouting and having a good time in church. The Bible says that whatsoever your hands find it to do, do it with all of your might. Talk back to me, somebody. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto man, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward. Talk back to me, somebody. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 20 says that a faithful man shall abound with much blessings. It's amazing what God has in store for people if they will just be Faithful unto him. One more scripture and we're going to wrap it up. In Matthew chapter 25 verses 19 to 21. It talks about the parable of the talents. You all remember that? The master was traveling. The Bible said that the kingdom of God is like unto a man who is traveling out to a far country. And he called his servants. He gave one of them five talents. The other two and the other he gave one talent, every man according to his several abilities, and straightway he took his journey. The one who received the five talents went and he traded, and he created another five. The one who received the two went and traded, he created another two, and the one who received the one went and hid that talent in the earth. Now the Bible says that long time, after a long time, verse 19, the Lord of those servants Come it and reckon it with them. Verse 20. And so he that had received five talents came and brought 
other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. Next verse. And his Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over what? A few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. And he did the same thing to the one who gained the extra two talents. Now I want you to notice something as I get ready to conclude the message. And that is the master did not say, well done thou good and successful servant. Oh, well done, thou good and rich servant. He said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. He kept using the word faithful. Thou has been faithful over a few things. You have been faithful in doing what I've given you to do. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I needed to break this down for me in my spirit so I could better understand what it is that you're trying to say to me and to the people of God. And the Lord said to me, he said that the life of my servants are not measured or judged by the amount of success that they have achieved, but by their faithfulness in doing what I have called them to do. I am not successful because I have a church of 10,000 people. And you are not unsuccessful because you have a church of 100 people. It has nothing to do with how many people we got. It has nothing to do with how much money we have. It has nothing to do with how many degrees we have. The question is, are you faithful with what God has given to you? Are you doing what God has called you to do? Or talk back to me, somebody. The Bible said that these men were faithful unto God. In other words, these men worked their talents. And even though the, that word talent in the Bible is really money, they invested, they did things to increase, to bring the masters increase and to expand the master's kingdom. They did great things. They worked diligently. And I'm sure, I'm sure that these men didn't have an easier times. I'm sure that there were some days when things were rough and when their backs were up against the wall. Talk back to me, somebody. I'm sure that they had some sleepless nights and some rough days and where, where they had lost some money along the way however they kept on being faithful they kept on being diligent they kept on being committed talk back to meet somebody they kept on being faithful to the master's plan and when the master came and he saw that they were faithful he said well done thou good and faithful servant enter into the joy of the Lord now you can handle some more you were faithful in the little now you can handle the much talk back to meet somebody and any, any pastor, any pastor will tell you, any pastor will tell you that being in pastoral ministry is not an easy thing. Not because you can preach and you have some members, that means everything is going to run smoothly and everything is going to be great. Even being in this position, I've had some ups and some downs. I've, I've had some appointments and some disappointments. I've had some people who talked about me. I've had some people who disrespected my leadership. I've had some people who turned their backs on me. Lord have mercy. But in the midst of it all, in the midst of all that I've encountered, I have learned to preach the gospel, to keep on praying for them, keep on loving them, keep on forgiving them. Why? Because I have learned that if God is going to use my life in the kingdom, I have to be faithful through the fix and through the thins. I have to be faithful to God. Come hell or high water, I have to be faithful unto God with what God has given to me. Whether you show up or you don't, don't show up. I still have to be faithful unto God. When I have a church of a hundred people or ten people, I still have to be faithful unto God. It is not required of me to have a big church even though I am desiring to have one. It is not required of me to be on television even though I desire to be. It is not required of me to have a mansion with six bedrooms and to drive a Mercedes and a BMW even though I desire to have those things uh, however uh, one thing that is required of me uh, I said one thing that is required of me Lord have mercy I want the devil to 
to hear me. One thing that is required of me is that I be found faithful in the things of God. Because when Jesus comes, I want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I want to be faithful morning, noon, and night. I want God to depend on me. I want God to choose me. I want God to use me. I want God to raise me. I want God to bless me. But the only way it's going to happen is when I'm faithful to God. Whether you are faithful or not, I still got to be faithful. Whether you love me or not, I'm still going to be faithful. Whether you talk about me or not, I'm still going to be faithful. Or talk back to me, somebody, through sickness and health, I still have to be faithful. Whether I'm blessed or broke, I still have to be faithful. Because the God that I serve is a faithful God. And he will reward every man. I said he will reward every man according to his deeds. Do I have a faithful people in the house? Come on and stand to your feet. Put your hands together and give God the praise. I say give God the praise. Give God the praise for faithfulness. It is required. I said it is required. I said it is required. Look at the person next to you and say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. It is required of you to be found faithful. Find one more person and say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. It is required. It is expected of you to be found faithful. Come on and give God praise. If you believe it. Come on, sir. Oh, come on, and 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 Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I wish I had a few faithful people to just lift up your hands and begin to bless. Come on, the Oshanda, ya babosa. Come on, the Anda babos. Oh, hallelujah, if you're faithful, if you're faithful. I want to hear you praise him if you're faithful. Hallelujah. If you have a faithful spirit, come on, you got to be faithful in your praises to God. you got to be faithful in everything. you got to be faithful in the little things. Come on, lift up your hands. Open up your mouth and say, Lord, here I am. Come on and give God glory. I'm here, I'm yours, God. Oh, I give you the praise. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, come on and praise. 